So welcome to an introduction to eBird part three as we explore the species and uh, the data. I kind of was going back between data and species because it's kind of both of them, of the birds in um, uh, your area. Um, here's the outline, the brief outline of what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, topics to be discussed, we'll be exploring the species and species maps, kind of the difference between those two tools in eBird. We're going to talk about exploring hotspots and how you can use hotspots to uh, scout out your birding before you go, kind of to figure out where you're going to go if you're trying to find a diverse area to go. Uh, we'll look at the bar charts uh, in eBird. Um, I've been trying to get the sights and sounds of eBird for a long time, so I'm going to make it this time. Uh, we'll uh, look at the other tools in eBird, like arrival and departure, first time and last time records, high counts, and look at the submission map and then end with any questions you have. Again, at any time in the lecture, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Um, that makes it, uh, the, I, I feel like in this lecture, you may have more questions than, than other lectures. So please just let me know. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and we're gonna go to sorry, it takes a little bit to get there. Um, there we go. All right. So again, you're welcome to follow along if you pull up eBird in your browser, if you're on a computer, if you're on an iPad, it might be a little difficult, uh, but you can kind of split the screen before, uh, between the two, between my lecture and um, the eBird website. So if you go to eBird.org, uh, it'll, it'll take you here. And then today we'll be spending most of our time in the Explore button in the top left corner here. Um, again, on the main eBird page, you can kind of see your, your main stats, how many checklists you've uh, submitted, how many species you've seen, uh, some news, and then the global statistics. Uh, I remember last week we were under 550,000 eBirders, now we're above. Um, if you can imagine a thousand new eBirders every single week, we're going to be, you know, at a million in, uh, before you know it. Um, and so. This is always cool to check to kind of see how eBird is really taking off. So I, I check that every, every week or so. All right, so again, if you go back to your Explore button in the top left, we are gonna start off with uh, these two tools right here, Explore Species and a Species Map. Um, the Explore Species is mainly for information if you're interested in more information about a species. So if you're interested in um, snowy owl or uh, chestnut side warbler, kind of about where its range is, uh, some photos of what it looks like, some brief photos, uh, some sounds. Um, the species map is to see where, that's what I, I think is most helpful is a species map because you get to see uh, where the birds are currently um, in, in the world and really in your community. So a lot of people are like, one of the warblers coming back. So instead of going here and, ex and, and explore species and, and typing in yellow warbler, uh, I, you should go to species map, uh, species map. So let's click on this and pretend uh, if you, and if, there are any, if there's any bird that you're interested in knowing when it's coming back or where it is right now, Go ahead and type that in the chat, and then Tim can let me know um, what bird to look up. But we're going to start out with the yellow warbler, because uh, I saw it up this morning. And uh, it'll show you the entire world. And we're going to type in yellow warbler here. And I'm going to click on it. And it's going to show me the entire world of where they are. Uh, so right now I have the date range on year round for all years. So this is where they've been recorded uh, throughout the world for since any checklist that was submitted to eBird. Um, and you can see 
uh, it's darker in the northern uh, in the northern North America, and that correlates here to the right, where it, sa where it says frequency, 40 to 100 percent, and then at the very bottom for light purple, zero to two percent. So that correlates to the frequency of checklists that I've submitted in that area. Uh, do they occur uh, in 40 to 100 percent of all checklists, or do they only occur from one to two percent? of checklists. Um, so you can see in the southern United States, only 0 to 2% of all checklists submitted have a yellow warbler in them. It doesn't mean that they're not in southern, uh, southern United States. Uh, just um, they're migrating through, and so people might only be submitting them for a short amount of time. So Ethan, I'm going to interrupt you here. I, I absolutely love this. And can you just for to, to help me, can you really quick do that same thing you just did uh, with House Sparrow and American Robin? Absolutely. <coughs> Let's go to House Sparrow. <clears throat> yeah, I've actually never looked up House Sparrow in, in eBird uh, for its range. Ah, right. Uh, so you can go here, the full species range in the top right corner where it kind of has that arrows going in different directions and you can click on that and it'll zoom out. So it looks like there are a heck of a lot of house sparrows in Spain, um, in Europe in general because of the dark purple. And then um, it looks like it's on every continent except for uh, Antarctica. There's heavy recordings over here. Um, Australia, um, oh, that's funny, you see Australia two times. So uh, there's a house sparrow and uh, American robin, you said? Yeah, American robin. <clears throat> and that is only in North America. Wow, there are a lot of, Alaska is really, really heavy in there. And you can zoom in um, and see kind of where that they're concentrated in. So it looks like in the Midwest, uh, Central USA, there are a lot of sightings and the most checklists. That, so again, that says 40%, at least 40% of the checklists um, have an American robin. That is, that is very, very common. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Um, when you're in the species map tool, um, it's cool to see the range and to see the frequency of the checklist, but say again, you're looking for yellow warblers, when are they arriving? And I will see their, their full species range here, which is North America for the most part. Um, but I want to know now what's happening. Like I, I know they haven't been here for the past, uh, five months or something. So what you're gonna go is you're gonna go to date. And right now it's automatically set to year round all years. I, when I'm, when I'm doing this, I almost always change it to current year. Um, that works well starting from a new year, from like January of a new year for the first few months. However, when I'm in fall, I'll probably change it to current year and I'll go to August or November or, or, or select my own months um, for a range. Because um, for current year, I'm only looking uh, for like the past four months or something. So it's really helpful if I look at current year. So I'm gonna go to the set date range. Oops, I, I have it set to, yeah, perfect. And this is really helpful now because I know that yellow warblers aren't up in Alaska. They're, they're not here yet and that makes sense. And you're going to zoom in to where you're interested. And I'm interested in Milwaukee. So you're going to scroll in. You, you see it gets a little bit more finer detail of the frequency. Keep zooming in. And there we go. There is Milwaukee. You're going to see the ones with, with, uh, uh, with a little flame in them. The little markings with a flame uh, means it's a birding hotspot. And I talked in my last lecture, what is a hotspot? Um, so that's a specific location. If I click on that one, that's Veterans Park, um, Sheridan Park. And the ones with just no flame, 
um, is this someone's personal backyard or a, or a specific, really specific park or location that they saw it in. The difference between the red and the blue um, is how old it is. You can see here it says older 30 plus days. However, because I have it set to current year, you're not going to see blue ones because no one was seeing yellow warblers over 30 days ago. Um, so if I take it off and I go to year round all years, you're going to see a lot of blue, right? Because these are, these are historic. Um, this was seen um, 20, we have data going from 2014. That's well over 30 days ago. However, again, it applies for the blue. The flame means it's a burning hotspot. And the, anything without a, um, uh, a flame is someone's specific um, uh, location that they, they did. So I'm going to go back to current year. And this is super helpful. Now I know where the yellow warblers have been spotted so far. Uh, it's definitely a little early for some of the warblers, uh, it's early for the warblers, but by clicking on these, I see a lot of sightings were seen on the 28th of April. And then as I move north, one was seen yesterday in Bender Park. Um, one was seen in the 26th of April. And there, there, there's a little photo icon there, meaning someone took a photo, which helps for evidence. And then the one that I saw uh, this morning um, at Veterans Park, I left a little comment because it's, uh, one of the first birds recorded in Milwaukee of a yellow warbler, and I just wanted to make sure that um, uh, it would it'd be a verified sighting. And so I just said, uh, this warbler-like bird was seen near the south end of the retaining wall of Veterans Park before popping up and perching on a bare tree. The plan of time to get, get a full view of its faint reddish streaks on its breast. Strikingly bright yellow bird all around, however, not like the yellow goldfinch. Um, I just didn't want people to think I saw a goldfinch when I, I clearly saw a, a yellow warbler. Uh, so you don't have to do that every time, but for an unusual bird, it's not super unusual, but kind of unusual. Um, I, I put a comment in there. Um, so you could go to Veterans Park right now. To, if you're looking for a yellow warbler, you could go there right now. Uh, it seems like if you went to uh, Wind Point, there's a good chance that you could see them as well. Um, uh, so they're, they're definitely coming in. I don't know if there's another, another bird you want to look for. Um, so feel free to chat a bird that you're interested in knowing where it is. I'm going to show you the black and white uh, warbler that I saw yesterday. And uh, I'm going to zoom out kind of to like, we're, again, we're in year round um, or, or for, the, for the current year right now. So you're not going to expect them to be way up in, in Canada yet. Um, so you have to zoom in to see the specific hotspots or to see the specific locations where they are. When you're zoomed out, you're just gonna see this frequency. And that's, that's kind of helpful, but like when you're looking where to go in Milwaukee, you wanna know exactly where it is. And so there again for the black and white, it looks like we had one on the 27th at Ware Nature Center, um, one on the 28th, uh, 28th again, um, and then it looks like there were a few sightings in Lake Park. Um, one of them was by me yesterday, and then one was on the 11th, which is quite a long time ago, and so they got a photo of that, and so we can click on that checklist too when you see that. I, I kind of like doing that. Oh, they got a blue-gray blue gnat catcher on the 11th, which is pretty early, and then clearly they saw a black and white warbler um, on the 11th. So that would be definitely be early for a black and white, but the photo helps confirm that they, they indeed did see that bird. Um, I really enjoy clicking on people's checklist to see what they're seeing when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing this. Uh, if I'm really wanting to see a black and white, uh, and I see, especially when they leave a comment or a photo, I'll click on their checklist um, just to like make sure um, or to see more in depth of what else they saw. If they saw black and white, um, they, they might have seen other cool things uh, as well. So here's my checklist that happens to be mine. Um, I, I'm surprised that I'm one of the first few people to see the black and white uh, warbler and the common yellow throat. Again, I left a comment because it was one of the first sightings in Milwaukee County. Um, and I left some additional information there as well. Um, 
So, all right, we'll close out of that. Um, let's see. So I, yeah, I, I use the, when I'm looking for a specific species and where to go, I use the explore species map a lot. Um, uh, let's think, I know there was a rare bird that the Ruff was seeing down in, I forget what county it is, but uh, that's a very, very rare bird for the entire United States. So if you look up Ruff, full species range, it's usually in Europe. You can see it in Europe and you can see, oh, for the year round. Okay, let's see. That's pretty rare for the entirety in the US. That's the number of sightings we've seen. Very, very infrequent, especially for the current year. And so I'm just gonna show you this. Uh, we're gonna zoom in. You see it's, it's dark purple here. Because it's such a rare bird, a lot of people came uh, to record the bird. Um, and so most of the checklists in this pretty rural area of Wisconsin have that rare bird. So it's not a common bird. It's just been one bird that's been spotted. Um, again, it's not a burning hot spot in the middle of the, the rural area. So there's no flame in there. However, when you zoom in more and more, you're like, holy cow, a lot of people came to this farm field and were, what were they looking for? And so um, because this was such a rare bird, most of them are gonna have a comment or a photo. Um, there's one really long list, one location that people picked, but you can just see the number of people that came here. This was seen on the 24th. Uh, I think it was here for a couple of days from what I understand, but I know people were coming up from Illinois and from around the Midwest uh, to find this uh, yep, on the 25th uh, to find the rough. Let's see if we can find a good picture that was seen of the rough. Uh, there we go. Um, there is the rough that's uh, really, really rare for the entire United States um, that was seen very, very recently. Um, so now I know exactly where that bird was seen. And if I had my rare bird alert set up for the entire state of Wisconsin, I would have gotten a notification on eBird, and then I could go there and look and know that it was exactly the intersection of Highway 67 and Prairie View Road. And um, I'm pretty sure it's gone. I think it moved up towards Madison, um, but super powerful for finding rare birds or, or birds that you're looking for. Um, and again, you can set up your target species list of birds that you wanna see. Um, and then once you say you want to see a surf scoter or something like that, you can go to explore species map and type it in and you'll see the most current um, sightings. Um, uh, so if, if, I, if you're in the fall, I probably wouldn't do current year, like if you're looking for the yellow warbler in fall, uh, I would probably want to do current year. I'd probably do August to November if I'm looking for it in September. Um, cause if I do current year, it's going to show me all the sightings from, from spring and it's going to, it's going to be so much like blue, uh, blue sightings. And that's going to, uh, kind of, um, overwhelm my map. And so I'd probably move to August to November like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I really, really enjoy, uh, explore species map as you can see, yeah, the rough is not being seen over here. All right, well, if there are no other birds that you uh, have ideas to look up, I'll move on to the next part. Um, I'm gonna go to the explore uh, section and we're gonna go to the explore species. I just wanna show you the difference between the two. And um, let's say we're interested in the rough. I don't really know too much about a rough. I've never seen one in my life. And so I'm, I'm interested in it. We're gonna type in rough. We're gonna click on that. And it's basically like, kind of like looking up a bird on Google. Um, it just gives you information, uh, a couple uh, couple images of what the bird looks like. Um, and juvenile, uh, female, um, and stuff like that. Wow, it's really, that's a gorgeous bird. <laughs> and then you get a little bit of information about um, a little bio about the bird, uh, feeds by probing and picking, often in shallow water. Um, 
flight often rather lazy. So you just get some information. You can you can listen to it, um, and you can see the number of, of statistics of how many times it's been recorded in eBird. So 91,000 seems like a lot, but that's over the entirety of data entered to eBird. There have only been 92,000 observations of this, uh, which is relatively low. Uh, lots of photos of it. Um, here you can see its whole 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 map. And then at the bottom, the, the top photos is the photos actually taken by people. Um, and it looks like there's one in New York here. A lot of people are taking a photo of that. And wow, they're so different. That's really cool to see. And then you have some audio of them as well that people, these are people like you and me have recorded. Um, obviously some people have amazing cameras and take amazing photos. Uh, it looks like some people have videos. So yeah, again, the photos, the audio, and the video are here. Um, so the explorer species is pretty simple. It's just to give you more information on a bird. Uh, you can look into a yellow warbler or um, the heron gull, whatever bird you're interested in. You can just type it in uh, here in the explorer uh, species. They also have a surprise me. <laughs> if you're just, if you have a bunch of time on your hand, you can just click surprise me and it'll find you a random bird, like this bird I've never heard of, a chestnut backed button quail. Um, looks really inter looks like prehistoric. Um, wow, it's range only 165 sightings ever. This is extremely rare. What part, where are we? Wow, in Australia. So <laughs> you, I guess you can go down a rabbit hole by doing surprise me and finding um, some random birds and really cool uh, uh, sightings and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, again, a lot of people get confused and this is like really prominent on the eBird website and people think they, they go there to find where the birds are right now. But in fact, it's in the species maps uh, tab. So just letting you know that. All right. I'm gonna move on to the explore hotspots and explore regions part. Um, I, I use that explore hotspots if I'm in a new area uh, um, or if I'm wanting to see um, uh, places that are the most um, diverse recently. So again, year round is kind of nice if you're more like just wondering about trends or something like that. But if you're doing it for your birding currently, I go to current year, I set date range, and then I zoom in to where I am birding. So I've been, I'm birding in Milwaukee, so I'm gonna zoom in here. And you see all these different colors, gray, blue, and green. And that correlates to the number of species observed over here. And so you're like, uh, if there's a light blue, that means there have only been 50 to 100 bird species seen at Washington Park. And you're like, wow, that seems really low. But again, remember that we're in the current year. If I change it to year round, now you're going to see a lot of color. And that means that uh, over its entire lifespan of all recorded data in eBird, that we've had 220, 20, 220 species at Veterans Park, which correlates with the color here on the right, um, stuff like that. Uh, so um, if you're looking for the most diverse spot currently, go to current year. And it looks like Lake Park has 119 species so far. Um, and I know there's one other green, I think this is Ware Nature Center. Yep, Ware has 109. And I think, Sh oh no, okay. I thought Schwitz was getting up there, but they're, they're not. So if you're looking for the two most diverse spots to go birding right now, it'd be Ware and, uh, uh, Lake Park. So let's click on Lake Park and um, uh, I click on view details and you can see this brings up a t there's a ton of information on here so um, bear with me. So the first thing it brings up is the most recent species seen. This was the last bird checklist submitted most recently which was today and you can see species that they saw. Uh, wow, 1,400 double-crested cormorants. I, I believe that. I saw a lot of them this morning by the lake um, migrating, flying overhead. Um, so it's a really good quick view of like to see most recent, to see what was most recently seen. And so sometimes I scroll down and I'm just looking for, you know, uh, I mean, uh, um, for some 
cool birds like a thrasher or a field sparrow, white throat. These were all seen today. So I know if I went there today, I have a chance at seeing some, some of these birds. Um, Bonaparte, so wood thrush was there. Uh, bluebird, pine warbler, savannah sparrow was there. Uh, sapsucker. Um, I, I had the common yellow throat and the black and white. So I was the last person to see that. Um, there was a gray cheeked. That was a, a rare bird for this time of year. And these are all really recent. So you, I keep scrolling down until maybe like a week out. Uh, so, um, and then I'm like, all right, I have an okay chance at seeing great blue here and there, uh, maybe a belted kingfisher uh, and stuff like that. So uh, this is really powerful to know what was most recently seen. The for, further you go down, the more like unlikely that it's been, you're going to see it like, I don't think I'm going to see a red-breasted nuthatch or a great horned owl there if I go there today. Um, so um, let's roll back up. Um, if you're interested in someone's checklist, you can then click on the date and it'll take you to their checklist. So it looks like, wow, Brad had a really big species list and I'm interested um, to see uh, his entire species list. Uh, so I'm going to click on it, let it load. So this person saw 47 species. Nice that they left a little comment about the time and the weather and the location. Um, and you can see everything that they saw. Um, it, it's some, uh, if you want to see specific people's checklists, this would be helpful, but I, I don't really go into people's checklists. This is the most powerful part right here is to see what was mo seen most recently. Um, you can also see the most recent visitors here in the right hand. I'll show you the top. So here's the top bar and then over here, um, you can see the most recent people. So we had one, two, three, four, five people submit checklists to eBird uh, yesterday. Um, this one hasn't loaded yet. It takes some time to get from here uh, into the recent visits. Um, but you can again ch check uh, people's checklists from over here. You have the top eBirders. Um, uh, some people really, really care about this, about they want to be in the top 10 and stuff like that. Um, so you can do it by species or by the number of checklists that you've submitted. Uh, so you can see that here. Uh, again, um, I, have it, uh, I have it set at current year. Um, and so um, if I change that, so I'm gonna go by species. So, so far this year, Brad has seen 96 species of, bird, of birds at uh, Lake Park. Um, but I could go to all years. Why don't we go ahead and do this? And we're gonna see who the top eBirder is. Uh, so Jim Mooney is the top eBirder uh, at uh, Lake Park over all time. Uh, so you can play around with the different uh, uh, the dates here. Um, in the next tab and recent visits, that kind of just shows you all of the recent visits rather than in that smaller view that you saw on the right hand side. You can see what time they started, how many species they saw, and again, you can ch check their checklist if you're interested. Illustrated checklist I don't really use too much. It's just of people who submitted photos of the bird, uh, of the birds for Lake Park. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, just showing photos of, of, of birds that were seen specifically at Lake Park. All right. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about or if you have any questions about that, about using the hotspot map. Uh, off, if you hit back here, it's going to reload you to the entire hotspot map for the entire world. So I recommend clicking back if you want to like look at a different hotspot in your community without it re having to resume um i click on the hot go back to the hotspot map and it keeps you zoomed in to this extent um oh another thing i want to show you is okay we're going to pretend we're coming into the hotspot map um all new again um from fresh we're going to click on hotspot map and you're like all right i don't really care about the birds in europe or i'm not interested in them right now but to scroll in all the way would would take forever you have two options if you know your hotspot name you can type it in here. However, Ethan's backyard is not a hotspot. A hotspot is verified by eBird and uh, can be entered by everybody. Uh, they can enter data for, into that hotspot. Um, 
so but i could i could type in lake park uh general i think is what it's called okay i'm not going to find it we'll try veterans park that veterans park so honestly i don't i never type in the hotspot name because i can never find it because there were so many hotspots with the same name so this handy tool on the top right is called the zoom tool this will save you a lot of time so i'm interested in milwaukee and I can then just make a tiny, do you see that little like square I made? I can make a little square and that saves me a bunch of time zooming in. Now I can manually zoom in with my mouse to the spot that I'm interested in. So just letting you know about the zoom tool. Um, this is uh, the other tools here where it says map type can be helpful. Uh, if this seeing the satellite and, and the imagery in the background is overwhelming to find color. Uh, you can click on terrain and that's kind of just like your basic Google Maps. Um, or this one's your basic Google Map the streets. Uh, so you can, whatever you like the best. Um, I actually like satellite, uh, satellite view probably more than hybrid. Um, hybrid kind of gets really messy and dirty with all the names and I'm in a place I'm familiar with. I, I don't need to know where those are. So if I'm I know where I am, I'll go to satellite view and then that gets rid of all the dirty stuff. And then I get to still see the satellite and see specific features like that tree and, and um, how the lagoon looks and stuff like that. Um, and you can also filter by recent activity, um, uh, like the past month or the past week. So when I go to the past week, some hotspots disappeared around here because it looks like no one has gone there in the past week. And when I go back to all hotspots, they pop up again. Um, it looks like we've only had 70, 72 checklists submitted ever here at 11th Street Bridge, Menominee River. All right, uh, if there are no other questions, I'm gonna move on to the next part, the explore regions um, uh, in, in eBird. Um, I don't use this section that much, but you can type in, say, Milwaukee. Uh, takes a while to load. And then you can just see the most recent things seen in the city of Milwaukee. Uh, this could save you time rather than going looking at individual checklists to find what's new in the city of Milwaukee. Um, you, can, you can go here. And so for the same thing, uh, when you're looking at individual hotspots. Now I'm looking at the city or county, I'm not sure what it is. Um, but again, like you, you can look for, for like at least flycatcher. Mm, I might be interested, where is that? I can click on that checklist. I know it's somewhere in Milwaukee. I don't know exactly where. Um, and that was in Warmount County Park. Uh, looks like they had a blue headed vireo as well. Um, so. Uh, it, it can be helpful depending on how you want to do it and it, it can save you time uh, and again it has the same uh, features as the other uh, um, um, as when you're in the hot spots and you can see as uh, a lot of people in Milwaukee have submitted uh, you can see I, I have three submissions uh, today um, uh, it looks like uh, there you go I see Robin Squire someone in the audience submitted the checklist today um, but I submitted, I was traveling through three different hotspots, so I sent, submitted three different checklists. Um, and it looks like Sam Corvo has been out and about, Regina has been out and about, so that's pretty cool to see. Um, so you can also put in the entire country, United States, uh, Quebec, uh, you know, you, you, whatever uh, it comes up with. If you put in something it doesn't recognize, you can't search it. So if I I, I remember running into this, I entered the location and it didn't recognize it. And so you, you won't look at that. Oh yeah, if I, if I put in the Midwest, it doesn't recognize what the Midwest is. So um, yeah. All right, bar charts. Uh, the next tool here in the bottom-ish right, middle right of the screen. Um, this is helpful to look at um, in general when it's likely for a bird to uh, to arrive or to depart or when it says peak in your location. So I'm interested in Wisconsin. I'm gonna go down to Wisconsin. Um, I could look at the entire state, but I'm, I'm interested in the county of Wisconsin. 
Um, you could do specific information like a hotspot, but usually there's so, there so little information overall for a specific hotspot that I find bar charts not useful. And I find the counties the most useful part of the bar charts. And you're gonna go, um, you're gonna scroll down and click continue. You can select from your specific locations. Uh, again, these are urban ecology center locations that we've had. Um, so um, you can, but I, again, I, I think that's the most helpful uh, counties in a specific state. And you're gonna click continue. Um, nope, I gotta pick Milwaukee County now. And if you're in another, another state, you can pick your state and stuff like that. So right now the date range is set from 1900 to 2020. And it has congregated all the data of all the birds seen since 1900. And it, it's created, uh, uh, they must do statistics on the, the, the abundance and likelihood of seeing it. And so we're early May. So what I like to do, uh, I'll put my mouse uh, where I am in the year. And uh, then I'll just scroll down. I have a little wheel on my mouse and I'll scroll down. So like right now I could see a black bellied whistling duck, uh, but you can see it's a tiny green little bird, uh, little thing. And so it's maybe only been seen once or twice, but when it was seen, it was seen in early May. So of all times of year, I have a very slim chance of seeing it now. Like in February, I, I know I'm not gonna see it, but I could see it in early May. And then I'll just scroll down and I'll see, oh, uh, uh, yeah, domestic goose species. Um, Canada goose uh, is really common. Uh, mute swan would be pretty rare. Um, wood duck, I have a good chance at seeing. Blue winged teal. Mallards are really common. The, the thicker the green bar, the more common it is. American black duck, my chances really decrease in early May. I have an okay chance at other times of the year. Um, so I'm going to scroll down to see, it's helpful to look at, okay, chimney swifts. Um, I could have been seeing them in April and I know they have been reported in Milwaukee, but uh, a little uncommon to see that, but they're definitely coming back now. And I can use this to my advantage to know that they're coming back and I have a good chance at seeing them at different places in Milwaukee. Uh, morning doves are seen throughout the year. Yellow-billed cuckoos would be pretty uncommon to see now, but they have been reported in really early May. Um, uh, let's go to the warblers. Uh, let's see. Where are you? You can do control F on your computer and type in warbler, and I'll take you right down to the warblers. Uh, oops, that did not. There we go. Worm eating warbler. Um, and so you can see, this is really cool. Now you get to see their, their, their migration pattern that they're really common, like black and white warblers are pretty common right in the middle of May. And then um, as they migrate through, it's pretty rare to see them in the middle of summer, but then on the way back, you'll see them in fall as well. And so the warblers are really cool to see, uh, to kind of like figure out on your own when their like median arrival date is. Um, Common yellow throat, uh, it seems somewhat common to see them in early May, and then they really peak middle of May, as with a lot of the warblers. Um, chestnut sided, uh, looks like they come a little bit later than the other warblers, so you can kind of like do your own. It's just fun to explore, and you see the yellow rums, yep, they're coming really early in April, um, and then they're, they're, they're completely gone, because they, they have to go really far north, um, so. Um, yeah, it's just fun to explore the bar charts and um, you can change the date if you're interested in, say, last year. You probably wouldn't pick this year because uh, you're trying to, it's helping you look at the trend. And so you could look at uh, 2019. Uh, let's do this quickly. And so it's just interesting. Uh, you'll see the black belly whistling duck or whatever is not here because it's not been seen in 2019 at all. Um, and so it just gives you the most recent. I usually don't do specific years. Like the entire date range is really helpful because that's like um, all the data and it's kind of like um, mixing it together to give you the, its best guess. Um, so yeah, that's, it's super helpful. 
All right, so that's bar charts. What am I going on to? Okay, sights and sounds. I've been trying to get to this for a while, um, but this is really helpful. Um, uh, if you're trying to learn what a new bird looks like or um, what it sounds like uh, without uh, having to Google it, it's all, all here collected by people like you. All that, all that data is there. Um, so you can see that we have almost 18 million photos, uh, 660,000 um, audio recordings and stuff like that. Um, but say you're interested in what the yellow rump warbler looks like uh, at different parts in the country, you can do yellow rumped warbler. And uh, let's see, where's the, and you can, you can choose location. So first we're gonna do Wisconsin. Uh, make sure you pick the selection here, not what it gives you, it, what eBird gives you, not like what it automatically thinks it is, because um, then it'll, it'll take you there. So this is what yellow rumped warblers look like in Wisconsin. Um, they're the Myrtle warblers. And, but now let's say you're in California. Oops. California. There we go. And or where do they look different? I, I don't even know what part of the country they look different. I've only seen um, the I forget the Audubon's yellow warbler or something. Anyways, you can see different variations of the bird uh, by changing location, and you get to see those photos. Um, a really cool thing is to um, listen to their sound. Um, so, okay, let me first delete, get out of here. I'm just gonna show you the house sparrow, um, the house sparrow call. And you can look at, oh, I saw the location set. Um, and it, I'm not interested in what they're looking, but uh, people, if you're interested in their sound, it sounds a lot like a, a house finch, the chirp. Um, for some people. And um, if you go to right now, set to recently uploaded. So I like going to best quality to see the best quality um, sounds that people have recorded that, and people have voted for. And I'm going to click on, let's see, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to stop share and I'm going to share again with my audio so you can hear it. Let's see if it works. Uh, share, share computer sound. Okay, let me know if you if you can hear this. The really cool thing is that you get to hell on us. Uh, you get to see the intricacy of the call. I don't know how they they graph it out. It's like an earthquake where it like shakes back and forth. You can see that intricacy. So I'm just gonna play this and just listen and look to see about how like beautiful their 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 call looks. Catalog number one zero five 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 six. Isn't that just like, you think it's just a chirp, but to like look at the range and to like, it, it looks like a stronger call here. Um, it's, it's just really cool. So if, if, if you're comparing a, a house sparrow to house finch now, let's go to house finch. And again, we're looking at the best quality of the calls. Here we go. This is the one I think I want. Okay, ag again, uh, listen and look at how it, how it, how it moves through. I, I don't even know how to do Get a log it. number 44967. So you can see how it's very different from the house sparrow where it continue, the note continues up rather than the house sparrow went up and then down, right? And so if you're, if you're struggling with, with, with a bird sound, it can really help to visualize this. And this is a free resource that you don't have to pay for. It's all collected by people like you and me. 
and you can really analyze the sound in a really unique way. Rather than just hearing, you can see the sound. I think this is like fascinating um, and I really enjoy that. Um, and I, usually I always pick the best quality because <laughs> there's a lot of low quality audio out there. If, if, if I went out to record a call, you just hear me in the background jibber jabbering. So um, just be sure to put on the best quality um, for that. And um, you can do it for photos too. If you want to find the, 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 the top rated house finch, that looks like a beautiful house finch, uh, way better than I would have uh, taken a photo of. Um, again, it's set up as quality. So you can do that for video, audio, and photos. Um, the sound is, just, I think, is really cool because you see a different perspective of hearing and seeing the sound. Um, so yeah, I really want to share that with you. All right, we have a couple more minutes um, and I'm gonna uh, show you some of the other uh, tools down here. Um, there is a submission map in the very bottom left. This is really cool to just kind of look at real time oh, um, uh, when people are submitting a checklist. So every yellow dot is someone that's submitting a checklist has clicked submit on their eBird uh, phone or on, online. And uh, we're getting a lot of submissions literally right now from, um, uh, from the East Coast. We had one from Chicago, one from Seattle, uh, one from uh, uh, the UK. Um, so this is just a cool little thing and, and you can see that we've had almost 18,000 checklists just today. All right, the next thing I want to show you is the arrivals and departures. Uh, you can just pick, uh, let's just pick Wisconsin here, pick your, your location. Um, and this is just, uh, I, I don't know if it's the median arrival or the first arrival um, scene for, you can pick the date, but I'd be interested in this year, what are the first arrivals that have been recorded. Um, so let's go to Warblers. Um, so the first uh, war meeting Warbler seen in Wisconsin was at Whitwell Park on the 23rd. The first black and white was seen on the 11th in Wisconsin at Lake Park. We, oh, we actually saw that one. Um, the first hooded Warbler was, oh, it's by, by Drew. I talked to him, he, he, he confirmed someone else saw it. So uh, it was seen on 26th. Uh, Yellow Warbler, the first one was seen on the 24th in Wisconsin. Um, so this is just kind of, if you're interested in looking at some, the, the, the first arrivals of something. Um, you can also do departures too. This would be maybe helpful in the fall to like see when the last one was, if you're interested. Um, uh, so. Be sure to check that out. All right, I'm gonna go with the next few minutes. I'm gonna go to all time, first time, last records. Uh, let's go to Wisconsin again. Uh, we'll do the entire state of Wisconsin. Um, this will probably be pretty impressive. So we're gonna looking at the first sighting ever seen in Wisconsin, going all the way back from 1845. Uh, so the first barnacle goose was seen in 1977. I'm picking birds here randomly. Um, the passenger pigeon was seen in 1848. That's amazing. I, wow, that's really cool to see that. Um, uh, Sand Hill Crane, the first recorded one was in 1892. Obviously they've been here a lot longer, but in the eBird database, that's the first recording. Uh, a Dunlin, 1959. So you can see most of them in the 1900s because um, they were seen like, it's not like, Done ones haven't been around forever, uh, stuff like that. So go ahead and check that out. Um, you can do high counts, um, last sighting uh, scene. This would be pretty recent for all the common birds. Obviously for the passenger pigeon, it's probably in 1848, um, but a lot of these are 2020 because uh, the Ross is a goose was seen pretty recently and stuff like that. Um, you can do high counts as well. Once it loads, uh, let's randomly pick something new. Uh, the snowy owl, 17 of them were seen in 2013 at the Cat Island Causeway. I'm not sure where that is, but that sounds amazing. Um, 2,285 northern flickers were seen at Saxon Harbor. Um, 
So it looks like something, a number that high you think is crazy, but it's probably been approved by eBird and, and that person probably had proof that there were that many. Again, these are the high counts, the highest number of flickers ever seen in the state ever. Um, so it would be pretty big. 462 Merlins. Um, that's, it's funny to see these, but um, I, I, if, you, if I submitted that right now, it probably wouldn't get approved. But if I really gave incredible documentation or had a video of 400 Merlins going by, I'd probably have a new high count. So Ethan, that's at a at Concordia University is a is a migration spot. So they'll sit there and the mic and the birds will mm. fly past them. So that's why you get 462 of them because it was all day yeah. tracking migration. Yeah, that's that's incredible. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> so uh, again, just for your own viewing pleasure, you can go there and, and check that out if you're interested in, in stuff like that. Um, I think, oh, so high counts is the same thing. Um, I clicked on it in a different way, but if you want to get there quickly, you can just click there. Uh, we could do counties. We could do high counts for Milwaukee County. Milwaukee, continue. And same thing, except it's now just for Milwaukee County, and I got there in a different different way. Uh, Cliff Swallows, uh, River Martins. Oh, so the access must be, hmm. Seems like I should change that in the eBird database that the X is a high count. You kind of want to see a number. Oh, the first time. Okay. You have to change it to high count here uh, in the top top right. Um, there we go. Four A downy peckers were seen at the Urban Ecology Center. Wow, we, uh, we're, we've got a county record for the most downy peckers seen in one time in 2017. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool to, uh, to look at that. And with that, I will end. Two minutes early, I somehow did it 